it's like the heart, the heart of a larger entity. Because it's not just about the island, it's about everything that comes out from that island. The spirituality, the caretaking of the environment, it's, it's inseparable from each other. The water flows past it, the water, that's the, that's the, that's the lifeblood of Mother Earth and lifeblood of the human race is that flowing water. It flows by the heart like that. It's going out into the, the greater, the greater world. All that water flows by that heart, the islands, and goes out into Lake Superior and through the other lakes and out into the ocean again. That's one of the reasons to that island is so important. It isn't because it's just a piece of land, because it's a symbol and a center, center of a culture and a and center of a world. And that's why it's important to us. My name is Leroy Defoe. My uh, Chippewa name is um, Obsibinis. I, I'm from the Fond du Lac Reservation where I'm the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer. Well, when I first came here, I was a little nervous, uh, a little apprehensive. I didn't know what to expect. I, I was scared of a lot of stories that I heard and I didn't know really what, really what to expect. But, on the shoreline there, I, I made my offerings to the water, and, and um, when we got over here, I made my offerings to the water and to the island, and, and um, I just felt better after I did that. I, I didn't feel so apprehensive. I felt kind of happy to be here because this is a beautiful place. It's it's a calming place. Um, in fact, uh, truthfully, I, I I enjoy it every time I come over here. Um, The Chippewa uh, Maiden and a Sioux, Sioux boy, they used to meet up on the, the mountains up there. And they were, from up where they were sitting, they could see the whole Spirit, Spirit Bay here, you know, the whole area. And, and they watched as there was a big war going on. And um, they watched the Sioux pretty get pretty beat up, you know what I mean? And, and um, that night, the chief of the Chippewa, he started looking around for his daughter and he couldn't find her and he had no clue on where she went and they started looking around for her 
all over this place because he thought she got hurt or, or captured and carried off. Well, they were sitting on a mountain up there and they seen the battle was over. So they snuck back down to the lake shore here and they stole a canoe and they came over here. And um, well, just the two of them, they, they made a small fire here. And, and then one of the uh, returning uh, bands of warriors that was looking around for her, they noticed, looked over to Spirit Mountain here and they seen a fire going. And so they went back and told that chief that that girl is probably on the island right here. And so they gathered all their warriors and in the morning, the next morning, they come over here looking for those two. And all they really found was a, a small campfire site and they found two sets of moccasins, uh, the woman's moccasins and the man's moccasins. And, and um, nobody had any idea where, where they went. And they think that they went up into the, the sky and today, if you look into the sky and you see a star twinkling at you, it's the campfire of those two people and they're up there letting you know that they're okay. It's kind of amazing since we had villages all around the St. Louis River Bay and um, Jay Cook and his cronies, they came in from Philadelphia, they were millionaires. They, they seen the, the possibilities of uh, iron ore being shipped out to the east where they could smelt it into steel. But there was only one real big problem, is the Indians were living here. So they chased all the Indians off here, most of them, and they sent them up to the Fond du Lac Reservation, at which was newly established in uh, 1850, with, through the 1854 treaty. Well, anyway, uh, we still had a few bands that stayed here, like. Wisconsin Point Indians, they, they, they stayed. And there's a few individual Indian families that, that lived around this um, river bay here. But the majority of us went up to Fond du Lac and that's, that's, where we, that's how we got up there. These resources are very important to our people. We got the wild rice, we got all the fish, we got the game, got the birds, fresh water. Uh, everything that we needed was right here. And, um, well, our people, Fond du Lac Band, we stayed in this area after, after the big battles to chase everybody out of here. We, we stayed here and we're still here. Bonjour. Nindo dema wasasi, indigena kaz, mishkomigwan. Indunjiban nagachuanang. My name is, uh, Wayne Dupuy, I come from the Fond du Lac Reservation, and my clan is the Oasisi. I was born in 1954. That's a hundred years after the uh, treaty with the United States government that established this reservation. So 100 years later, after the reservation was established, I was born, which meant that uh, in my younger years, I had an opportunity to talk to the grandsons of the people that made that treaty. There was still lots of discussion about the boundaries of the reservation and the uh, mistrust that was still there with the United States government in, in how they used the reservation system as an apartheid system here in the United States. So Spirit Island, its significance is that uh, there was a, uh, a leader, I would, I'll just say leader, called Little, Little Otter, Nigikuns, uh, who led people from the north when we separated by Sault Ste. Marie. They went around to the north end of Lake Superior and there was a group of people that went to the south side of Lake Superior. And they met and uh, it was at Spirit Island that they resumed the ceremonies of Madei to uh, help unite the tribe and reinvigorate those spirits that help all of the people. So that's the significance of Spirit Island. Fond du Lac did, did acquire the island uh, probably four years ago, three or four years ago. And the reason they purchased it was because of the, its historical significance to the tribes. If you look today, you know, the uh, 
the bay, Spirit Bay, and and uh, the St. Louis River, what we call Nagachiwanong, CB. That's the, the river at the end of the lake or the head of the lake. It had to be magnificent back in those days before all of the industry took on uh, their role here in this region. There was wild rice throughout the bay. Spirit Island itself right now is maybe five acres, but if you look at the bay right now, you'll see blue water, but in those days it was all green. It was either rice or emerging wetlands that were, were there. I think that the uh, industry right next to the bay and the, the water front is kind of an abomination to tell you the truth. I know back in the day it had its purpose, it made things easier, more efficient to have your, your operations next to the river, but it is somewhat of an abomination to me to, to see that there. When iron was discovered up on the iron range and they were moving it down through the harbor to ship it out to steel mills, or in some cases operating steel mills down in the harbor, uh, that was the, kind of the beginning of what I called the dirty industry. And you had steel mills, you had coke plants, you had all kinds of industry, heavy industry, that at that time thought nothing of dumping whatever waste, whether it be solid, liquid, or whatever, straight into the river. Because that was just seen as the easiest uh, way to, to get rid of what they didn't want on the land and in the way. Uh, U.S. Steel was um, not in a big hurry to address their responsibilities, their liabilities for cleaning up the contaminated sediments. But with um, an infusion of money from the federal government under the Great Lakes Legacy Act right now, um, the EPA is trying very hard to clean up some of these old, um, large, contaminated sediment sites around the Great Lakes. And U.S. Steel is one of the biggest and one of the most well-known uh, contaminated sediment sites in the Great Lakes. So that's just one piece of it. There's the remediation, the, the cleanup of the contamination. What's just as important to the tribal community, though, is restoration. It isn't enough simply to, to clean up the nasty stuff, although that's probably the first step and most important step. It will be really important to actively restore high quality habitat so that the native plant community, including wild rice in some areas, can come back. And that plant community can be part of a healthy, functioning ecosystem down there in Spirit Lake and surrounding Spirit Island. Okay, well, my name is Jeff Savage. I'm a enrolled member of the Lake Superior Band of Fond du Lac Chippewa. I live here on the Fond du Lac Reservation. My wife is also an enrolled member as are our children here on this reservation and our grandchildren. And hopefully our great-grandchildren will be able to be enrolled yet. I'm also director of our tribal museum and cultural center here on the Fond du Lac Reservation. Okay, Spirit Island historically was a place where we held a lot of our Grand Medicine Society ceremonies known as the Medewin or the Medicine Lodge. It was a place where they would hold ceremonies. A lot of times these were four or five days long or longer. So it was a ceremonial site. It's also still one today. If you go out there, you'll find that people have made pilgrimages out there and left offerings you'll find that on the island still today. So Native American people did use it in the past for ceremonial purposes, and because it, it has a flat top. So it was a good spot to hold a, a gathering because it had a good flat spot. Why, why did we have to buy Spirit Island back? Well, that's a long history of uh, Euro domination in this country. And anybody knows that the only way you can oppress and colonialize an area is by diminishing the importance of the indigenous people and their beliefs 
and their uh, actions and activities to make them less important than you so that you can ignore their property rights and bring in your alien concept of land ownership over to America and then impose it on us. We call the European or the white man, if you want to call him, Anishinaabe and other tribes call him our little brother. We call the Europeans our little brother. Why do we call him our little brother? Because like a little kid, they don't know what they're doing. They're running around wrecking stuff. And until this continent and this soil is made up from the bones of their ancestors, they won't treat it sacred. And that's the philosophy we go by. So we just have to sit here and wait and try to help our little brother grow up so that he can quit running around doing all this wrecking and, and get back to caretaking like he's supposed to. And so Spirit Lake, Spirit Island symbolizes that to us. The Creator gave you the responsibility to be a caretaker. He didn't say to dominate nature, he said to take care of it. So it's our responsibility to be caretakers over things like this. If the island disappeared due to neglect, well then, so would the Anishina we wouldn't be Anishinaabe anymore. Just like that island, we'd, our culture, our society would slowly dissolve and wash away. It's not going to last forever. If you look on the outside of this island, you can see where it's gradually going into the lake. So who knows, maybe 500 years from now, there might not be much left of this island at all. When you go out there, you, you know in your heart that you're supposed to respect that particular spot. Not that you disrespect anywhere else, it's just some places just have a little more spiritual emphasis, if you want to say. And that happens to be one of the places for our people, Spirit Island. If we have maybe that last stand that says, get back in touch with all of those things that contribute to your life, rather than extracting those resources and uh, poisoning the waters and contaminating the foods we eat. And maybe that Spirit Island can be saying, get back in touch 